Hi there video, welcome to Andy's Bay Reviews. Um, I'm going to do a review and a chat today. I've never really, I've done a couple of uh, kind of chats, but it's been kind of a sad we, sad and weird uh, week today. So um, I thought I'd crack open a, a Pale Planet from Brewdog. Got this in Asda today, uh, £2.20. Um, yeah, I just thought a bit of a... Bit of an update, really. What's happening? Uh, what's happening with me? Um, I've got a dirty glass. It's never a good start when you're drinking a beer, is it? Dirty glasses. So anyway, this is a so it's pale ale. It's 4.3 percent. Kind of like the colour of the can. It's a bit yeah. But do you know what? I actually like that. I don't know why, but never mind. Um, yeah, so, uh, sorry, start off with the beer anyway. So it's uh, Brewdog, obviously. Um, bit Marmite Brewdog out there at the moment. People like them, people don't like them. Um, do you know what? I take each beer as it comes. Don't particularly like them as a, as a company. Some, business, some beers are alright, some are not. You know, they had the heyday back in, uh, what, 2015. They'll never get it back. So, um, so yeah, but it, when it comes to beers, yeah, just, just, just take them as it comes. This is a decent beer, um, simply because the fact it's called Planet Pale and they're pushing the um, carbon neutral agenda. And they've got loads of bumping here about how they're carbon negative, not carbon neutral, but carbon negative. Um, and they did that, all that stuff didn't they, about planting trees, but... Was it really them plant? Was it really them putting the money up for planting trees? Or because all that controversy wasn't there recently on that Scottish BBC documentary about the fact that turn around to the Scottish government says, right, we want to plant all these trees down this land that we've got. Uh, give us some money to plant trees. So I think after that, I think they've said they, they are still committed to um, planting. Is it 1.1 million trees or something like that? Which, as a planet, we need to do. We need to do something to stop climate change um, personally I think we're on the cusp of summer I think we're on the cusp or, or it's, a, it's almost of course it's almost a tipping point where if we don't do something now then the planet is in I mean the planet's in serious danger anyway uh, but if we don't do something now then I don't think we'll be able to get it back so um, yeah planting more trees growing more trees has got to be an absolutely great thing to do anyway back to the beer that has poured a um, straw colour fairly clear uh, it did have a small white head uh, before I started talking so uh, but that's dissipated quite quickly now um, yeah Let's see what the aroma is like shall we actually it's quite it's quite a decent aroma it's hoppy it, there's a very light zesty citrus note. Shall we taste it? Cheers everybody. It's actually quite nice. That's quite nice actually for a, a brew dog. I don't know why I'm slow down. Low down. I've changed the setup a little bit. We've had a couple of issues. Um, which I will come on to, which has meant a little bit of setup's change here a little bit, but um, yeah, beer. Um, yeah, it's quite hoppy on there as well as a nice orangey flavour coming through. A bit of grapefruit, a bit of passion fruit. It tastes a little bit thin, if you ask in my personal opinion. Uh, I know nobody was, but uh, it tastes a little bit thin. That's actually quite, you know, for a brew dog beer. I know the first one, the brewed, um, got absolutely slated. But that's got some nice flavour behind it, behind it. So that's quite nice. Um, yeah, so the week. Um, 
I suppose the leak technically started three weeks ago when we um, we've kept rabbits. We've kept rabbits for a little while. We had a little crunchy. She died quite young, and then we adopted two, uh, rescued two rabbits, sooty and sweet. We didn't name them um, from uh, pet, a pets at home scheme. And yeah, uh, sweet lasted to a decent uh, decent age, and then he passed away. Um, and then three weeks ago, we lost Sutty. Um, who was absolutely gorgeous. Towards the end, it was it was absolutely gorgeous. When we had Sutty and Sweet together, um, they were just so tight with each other, and they didn't like any human interaction. After we lost uh, Sweet, Sutty became quite affectionate. It was quite nice. Came for kisses, loved cuddles. Um, still didn't like being picked up too much. Strokes and using the coat, the coat, the uh, brush on him. He loved it. He loved all that. I had to spend a lot of time with him, talking to him, uh, and play with him and such. And yeah, so he he died um, about three weeks ago. Um, well, probably about four weeks ago now. Yeah, probably about four weeks ago now. And they're all buried in the garden, all pets. It's like a pet cemetery out there sometimes. Um, And then we had a cat, Oscar, nine years old. Uh, nine years old, sorry. Aging him for his time, six years old. And after Sooty died, he went downhill. And we thought it was just pining. We just thought it was, because um, he got on. He got he got on with Sooty. I don't think Sooty ever knew he got on with him, but you know, they'll, they'll knock to bite in the garden together and had a bit of fun chasing each other around. So, so they were quite pally. And after Sooty died, um, Oscar just seemed, uh, seemed to be mourning, I suppose. He just seemed to go downhill, didn't he? Eat his food, we trying on different foods, and we got him eating again. But just seemed very lethargic. And then we just, in a matter of days, really, after Sully died, we realised that he was losing quite a bit of weight. So we did all, all the stuff, took him to vets early on. And it seemed that uh, Oscar had a tumour. Um, and so we went for some tests and last Friday um, he had some more tests done and they found um, what I suspected was another tumour. Didn't know at this stage whether anything was cancerous or not. So that was Friday. Mm -hmm. I came I came home quite um, I came home in a bit of a rush midday because Mrs. Andy was just quite worried. They obviously found the second tumour and the vets wanted to talk to us, so I had to get home for the vets to do that. If I'm being honest, I didn't think we'd leave vets with him. I thought they were going to say, look, it's really bad, there's nothing we can do, um, up to you, but we'd recommend euthanasia. So I honestly didn't think we were going to bring Oscar home, but we did. And the vet gave us a couple of options, and one of them was surgery. And the plan was, if surgery went okay with um, one of his main tumours which was on his uh, intestines um, then the prognosis is a lot better and so that was Friday so that was last Friday so this Monday luckily I was on holiday this week um, the idea was to go to the East Coast get a few days away from from work Mrs Andy's very good and had a full week off since she got a new job so it's a good opportunity for us to both get away, clear the heads, that sort of thing. Um, so one day we agreed to ask her to have an operation, uh, cut out this tumour on his intestines. And luckily doing, kind of luckily I suppose for Oscar, doing the pre-operation, like blood test and, and that sort of thing, the found his red blood count was low. And what they think's happened is, well, one of the tumours, and they don't know where or what, but whilst you know, the tumour on his intestines is a tumour on, on his chest, and what they don't actually know is one of them, because his red blood count was low, it looks like that he's been bleeding to one of these tumours. Uh, so the risk is with an operation, if they're trying to cut out one of these tumours, if they make a mistake, then he will literally bleed to death. He will. You can't get an infusion in cats 
uh, if they do the wrong thing um, and he does start bleeding that's it he'll die in surgery so that's you put him through that or, or you, you put him through a surgery to kind of a risk that and b if that was okay and if that worked he had his other tumor um, and the vet basically just said look you can go for the operation if you want uh, but when it comes round and when it gets fit from that the likelihood is he's just going to deteriorate from his second tumour anyway and there's not a lot they can do in cats when, when, when this sort of thing happens particularly if they think it's, it's cancerous then, then it will, they will just go downhill fairly quickly so yeah so Monday we took the decision to euthanize Oscar so good in one way he's now at peace no pain nothing like that and we built a little memorial garden uh, so there's a little garden now to the three boys, so Sooty Sweep and Oscar. On the other side we've got our Crunchy and my niece's guinea pig Daisy buried as well. Um, so we'll do something on, on that side. But we've made the, the, the little, done a raised bed, put some lovely plants in there. Uh, there's a rose in there, there's a rhododendron in there, uh, magnolia, something called Little Red Robin. Is, but beautiful plants. Got a little plaque with a cat on it, playing with some dragonflies, and we've, we've just had some lights now sorted as well. So we did that. Been busy this week, just outside here. We've made like a little pergola eating place as well. So we've been busy, we've been busy building stuff, and then to top it all yesterday so we built this pergola almost like next door to, up with a foot of next door's garage and the, and I'm gonna swear the bastard kid next door I don't think he's illegitimate by the way but him and his stupid dickhead mates found a petrol can in their garage and decided to play with it the garage has gone up in smoke their car next door which is over there probably about 10 foot away from there from me over there um the car caught on fire as well and, and that's a total write-off that's all exploded now and, and stuff like that so uh yeah it's been a sad and weird week all in all really um hmm my beers are safe in here I mentioned to the firemen I had beers in here and they kept everything safe. What they couldn't do with all the billions of gallons of water is keep water out of uh, the alehouse. So we had a little bit of flooding, but all that is now sorted. And uh, we got a burnt out car on the, get on the drive next door and a uh, great big hole where their garage should be. But hey ho, strange week. It's been one of those weeks this week. Anyway, back to the beer. Um, flavour wise, sorry, so if you remember the aroma, it was a hoppy aroma, wasn't it? Um, light, fruity, zesty, kind of, almost citrusy actually, uh, aromas. Flavour wise, um, yeah, some lovely orange coming through, a bit of grapefruit, a bit of passion fruit. Get the biscuit flavour from the malt it's actually okay and I think the message they're trying to get across with this even if people don't particularly like the beer it's going to sound bad and I'll be the beer reviewer but if people don't actually like the beer but they buy it and they get the message and they try and do something to change what they do all well and good all well and good yeah strange week sad weird okay beer um, beer score wise for me for that is gonna be uh, six and a half out of ten yeah six and a half out of ten from Andy's beer reviews until our very next review cheers everybody